So hello everyone, my name is Mick Jeffries. I'm from the Minnetokavit uh, land region in Labrador. Um, and I'm very excited to be the facilitator to this conversation with Nancy. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Um, so please reach out through chat if you are having any issues with technology. If you have any questions, um, I can ask Nancy the questions through chat. Um, and just let me know and then we can sort anything out if you are having any issues that way. So thank you too for participating in the third annual Sustainability Week. Um, I hope that you and your family are all safe and well during these unprecedented times. While things are a little different this year, we still wanted to recognize and celebrate the importance of sustainability on campus and in our surrounding communities. We are very thankful to be able to continue these events online and we are even more excited to have Nancy Hearn with us for a session on Indigenous Holistic Wellness. Before we begin our session, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that UNB resides on the stolen, unsurrendered, and unceded traditional lands of the Wustukiuk. Um, and if you don't know what land you reside on, I highly recommend looking at the website that I will link after in the comments. They are a great resource to understand land acknowledgements and its roles in reconciliation. Now a little bit about Nancy. So she is Mi'kmaq from the Us, I'm sorry, I'm gonna probably butcher this a little bit. Akpiganchik. Usubiganchik? Akpiganchik. Perfect, First Nations and is the coordinator of the, I'm also gonna butcher this, so I'm sorry, the Dusuliet? Delsenout. Delsenout, there we go. Wellness okay. Center, where she also provides indigenous counseling services. Um, as a coordinator, Nancy offers students opportunity to gather and participate in a variety of workshops and events which rich in their Indigenous culture and ways of being. Nancy sees her role as the Indigenous student counselor as an opportunity to assist First Nations students with their overall well-being as they manage their journey throughout their time here at UNB. The do Delsenout? Delsenout Wellness Center is part of the Mi'kmaq Wallistikwe Center at UMB Fredericton campus. And um, yeah, so my apologies for butchering the language. Um, I am in Inuit from Labrador, so um, Mi'kmaq Nation um, is not a language that I am familiar with. But um, I'll pass off to Nancy. Thank you so much. So yeah, a little bit about myself. I basically I was born in the States, but I grew up from a very young age. I think I was like three months old um, in my home community of Akpiganchik, which is ill by our First Nation. Um, I came from a big family. So, you know, really had to learn to raise my voice in order to be heard because there was always something going on. And although I, I always kind of saw myself as a helper, I never really saw myself as a counselor. Um, but when I uh, was working at the university, I was an academic advisor for First Nation students. And a lot of the students were coming to me not talking about, you know, how to sign up for a course or, you know, what course should I take next? A lot of stuff was, very heavy and it was coming from their home lives. It was coming from being away from their home communities, not really feeling like you fit in um, at the university level. Kind of uh, a lot of imposter syndrome. And, and I really related with that because when I was going for my undergrad, uh, the very first attempt I did, I wouldn't even open the door if I was late for class. I didn't, I couldn't even imagine to have the whole class turn and stare at me as I walked through the door late. So I, I just, I couldn't do it. Needless to say, I wasn't ready. Um, I went back years later for my uh, bachelor of business. And when I did that, I kind of still felt like I had to leave a part of my identity at the door to fit in. Um, I had few times where I was asked to speak on behalf of all Indigenous people in my class. And I was like, you know, I'm here to learn. I'm not here to teach at that point in time. And a lot of the stuff growing up, my reality wasn't, you know, 
where I dug into the history of our people. I just lived it. So I really felt out of place. And also I didn't know my language and that made me feel extra uncomfortable. So going back, I decided to go for my master's in education. And at that point in time, um, I knew I could apply to work at CC Jones and work with students on campus, but I wanted to do something specific for indigenous students. I was like, you know, there's a little, little bit of difference here and there where, you know, you just want somebody to understand where you're coming from without always having to explain. So having that, I decided, you know, um, I reached out to Dave Purley, who was the director at the time and had the support of Imelda um, and many people up at the Mi'kmaq Wollstuck Way Center and said, you know, basically, I'd like to have counseling up at um, Marshall Davery so that Indigenous students didn't have to feel like they had to go down the hill and kind of go through the process that's very clinical like the sign in and the intake and I wanted it to be more comfortable and I you know I love CC Jones I, I I'm it's incredible the work they do I can't believe how go 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 they are and you know I work with them at times but I wanted something different a little bit more flexible so anyway, um, in the fall of 2018, um, I got to start my practicum and um, basically started the Dalson Out Wellness Center with my counseling supervisor at the time, Jen Rowett. Um, as an ally, Jen understood a lot of the things I was kind of looking to put in place and we worked together and we worked together really well and did the whole grassroots from bringing stuff from our home in we wanted it to be really comfortable Amelda actually suggested that we do a medicine table and it was just uh, it just felt so good it fueled my heart so Dulcinau is actually from the Wollastook language and it was gifted to us by Elder Imelda Purley. And the translation is one's personal path towards strength and wellness. So it's not like you're coming in broken and we're gonna fix you, you know, it's basically you are in charge of your journey. And I'm just along for the ride trying to help you talk things out and get a little bit of perspective here and there where things may be confusing and stuff like that. So basically, uh, the counseling services offered is short term, uh, solution focused, uh, longer term therapeutic, and also like student crisis counseling when needed. Like, um, say, if something happened back in the community and it really is affecting them, like right now with what's going on in Nova Scotia, a lot of our students are really having a difficult time handling that. We dealt with it uh, in sessions, we've dealt everything from anxiety, stress, um, childhood trauma, intergenerational trauma, um, pretty much anything on that spectrum. So, Part of my role was bringing in different workshops. And so we've had, you know, where we, we make regalia with students or I would bring in food and I would cook for students. And there was like such a great group at the um, MWC, the Mi'kmaq Wollastook Way Center that I, I really never felt like I was doing it alone. So anyway, that uh, basically is where I'm coming from. I love what I do and uh, hopefully today we can go, like I did a little bit of introduction, I'd like to do a smudge. And so what's important for me is when I smudge, I am sure there's many people out there who can tell you so much more than I ever could about smudging and the medicines and stuff like that. But for me, I believe that you meet the person where they're at. So whether this is the first time you smudge or the hundredth time you smudge, you do it in the way that grounds you and brings a sense of balance in your life. So 
hopefully that makes sense. And if you're okay with that, um, basically, I would like to talk a little bit about smudging. So the smudging ceremony, basically you can use um, something like this. It's wrapped. I don't know how well you can see that. It's, um, this has cedar and sage in it. Um, I usually use just dried cedar, uh, sage whenever I do it, but it's, um, it's totally up to you. So cedar basically is to purify and protect your home. And I'll use cedar sometimes, but for the most part, like I said, it's, I usually use just sage. Um, sweet grass actually purifies your spirit and it's supposed to help calm you and heal, um, like heal you inside when you're hurting. So um, it's like, it's kind of like a safety thing, I, I guess would be a great way to say it, I don't know. Sage is a cleanser, it removes negative energy and that's probably one of the reasons why I use it a lot. And finally tobacco, but um, with tobacco, one of the elders told me, because the tobacco we get now is kind of processed and everything like that. They don't suggest that you put it in your smudge bowl. And like you can offer tobacco if like, say, I don't know, if you're taking something, like if you're picking sweet grass, you can offer tobacco as a way to say thank you. And it's a respect for taking the sweet grass from for your use. Anyway, I don't know how that works or not how that works, how, how to come across with that. But like say if you were out hunting and you, you got a moose, you can lay tobacco down for that moose that gave its life to feed your family and for the hide and stuff like that. And there's all kinds of smudging prayers online. You can just Google it and there's some that you can go through your house and you can like say my little bundle here you can go through light it and you can just basically smudge the four corners and up and down um in your house but for me i'm going to shut my fan off because <laughs> then it might get a little too chilly um but for me uh, i light it and i usually use matches but my matches are in the kitchen and so the smoke that comes so say do a smudging prayer it would go through and tell you you know the different steps how you do it but what I ended up doing and I usually stand so I hope this is I hope this is okay I'm just gonna move this screen down so I always take my smoke and I start by cleansing my hands and my glasses because my hands is for the work that I'm going to be doing and my glasses are part, it's kind of similar to when you smudge your eyes. It's to help you to see what you need to see, help you to see things clearly and understand what you're seeing. That's how I take it. Again, other people will explain it different. I smudge my ears, especially in what I do. It's like, I wanna be able to hear even things that are said, you know, in between the lines, like, you know, reading between your lines. I wanna make sure that I don't miss those messages that people are telling me. And same with my mouth. My mouth is so that I can say what needs to be said to meet with the student where they're at. And I also do my arms. Again, it's kind of the same thing. The work that I do, I use my arms, my legs. So as it carries me forward, I need my legs for that, so. I smudge my legs. I smudge the bottom of both my feet so that when I'm walking forward, I'm doing it with the best intention, I guess is the way to say it. And I've always done a few seconds in front of me for the seven generations that are to come and behind me for the seven generations behind and our ancestors. And then the very last thing I'll do is my heart. So 
basically the idea that I wanted to do it that way so that um, I didn't want to do it following a, a written script. I wanted to do it in a way that students would understand this is for you. It's a grounding technique. It's a healing. It's, it's a connection that's spiritual, that you can connect with your ancestors. It's just, it's a healing thing. So it doesn't have to be right or wrong. It is what it is for you. And, you know, it's really important that you take the time to do the things that make you feel well. And it's not about being perfect or doing it right it's about actually doing something that helps you so anyway having said that uh, if there's any questions right now we can take a quick minute and if not I'd like to talk a little bit about you know sustainability for indigenous students in school you know so is there anybody or Oh, that's just a Lynn. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. Stop me at any point in time. Okay. So basically, the way I view holistic wellness is whether or not the medicine wheel came from us or it's just something that was picked up later on. I'm not here to argue that or, you know, discuss that. To me, the medicine wheel just is a good visual for balance. And, you know, um, holistic wellness to me is a balance of mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Um, I don't have it all figured out. My life is not perfect. Um, I'm not in balance. Um, it's something that I strive for and, you know, at times is incredibly, you know, you're just in a good place. You feel like you got everything in order and you know you but it doesn't last it would be impossible to live to that standard so um some of the things i do um for my mental health i would probably have to say is talk to somebody as a counselor um i listen a lot but you know i i have stuff too and for me uh being able to get that out is a huge release like when you carry something and it's only inside of you and you don't share it, it builds up and it call, can cause like almost like a whirlwind effect where it's just a spiral that it's just, you can't think straight after a while, your head is so jumbled. And to me, you know, getting a chance to release that in a safe space, and that's important, somebody safe that you can talk to is, um, I have to say, it's like healing. It's, it's incredibly therapeutic to let go and realize that, hey, some of the stuff I'm carrying is not mine. Why, why am I carrying it? Um, so that's like, seek out help. If you don't have a close friend or family member that you trust, seek out professional help. Talk to a counselor. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, take a walk and breathe in. You know, that's something I do. I connect to the land. This year I did uh, gardens and it was incredible just to watch something grow and go out there every day and check, oh, look at my tomatoes or, you know, and to me, it really was healing in a way that I was caring for something, you know, and it, it, I don't know, it helped me for that few minutes that I was out there escape all the chaos that's going on in this world and just was there with the soil and the plants and the watering and it, it was incredible. Um, something else, uh, celebrate small wins. Um, Holistic, holistic wellness is like a spectrum, you know, and basically you're never going to be completely at one end or the other. You're always somewhere in the middle. And if you have a small win, like if you wake up one day and you're like, I can't even get out of bed. I don't want to move. Uh, 
you know, everything's against me and dark and gloomy and you manage to get up and take a shower or have a piece of toast, that's a, that's a huge deal. That's a win. And you celebrate that. And, you know, not everything is perfect, but I got up and I had something to eat. I got up and I had a shower, you know, or I walked into a room um, late and I didn't let it stop me. You know, I felt uncomfortable, sure, but I didn't let it stop me. And I wish somebody would have helped me long time ago with a lot of this whole idea that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get everything right. Um, so for physical, it's easy, the basics, diet, sleep, um, exercise. It doesn't have to be a regimen. Exercise could be a walk down the road. Check your mail. You know, uh, sleep could be laying in bed, even though you're not fully ready to go to bed, you know, but you're going to rest because you have a hard time falling asleep. You're going to rest for the first little bit. Go get a massage if you, you know, I don't know. To me, like, if you can treat your body in a way, if you can't afford a massage, take a nice hot bath or a shower or whatever. Um, massage your feet or, you know, there's little ways you can take care of those parts of you that just kind of give you a little bit extra pep in your step, I guess is basically the way I would explain it. Um, for my emotional well-being, I find I, I have to surround myself with people that lift me up and who are not going to criticize and pass judgment on me. Like I said, I'm not perfect. I don't have all my crap figured out. But that's life. You know, I make mistakes. I learn from mistakes. And that's okay. Being a human, we're all going to make mistakes. Um, it's very important for me too to allow myself to ha actually feel my emotions. They may not always be great. Like sometimes <laughs> to be angry or scared or sad or need to cry, they're all just as great as happy and joy. And as far as you're allowed to feel them, um, it's kind of like. How do, you, how do you know that joy is there if you've never had a hard time? You know, like if you, how do you, how do you differentiate between the good and the bad if you only had, you know, and it's okay to cry. Crying, I used to think was a sign of weakness. And as I surround myself with people that are just incredibly strong people, I love the idea one elder said one time, it's a gift to cry. It's a gift to release. And if somebody is going to cry, don't reach out and try to stop them. And, you know, oh, no, 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 don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes it's not okay. And letting them feel that and letting them work through it, they come out on the other side of that going, yeah, it was bad, but I got through it. And that's build skills for down the road. Um, I don't even know. Uh, sometimes like they say, <laughs> you can't choose your family. Um, but actually you can, like, I not proud of it, but there are members of my family that I distanced myself from and they distanced themselves from me because it just wasn't it wasn't healthy for me or probably them too, because maybe I'm not easy to live with, but um, you know, that's okay. I can't sit there and try to fix something to my detriment. If there was ever a time to make peace and you know, like uh, I'd be open to it but I'm not going to sacrifice everything that I have that's good in my life right now to bring in a toxic person who does not want a relationship with me. And I'm okay with that. So it's, you know, the whole idea, we don't have to live up to other people's expectations. You know, sometimes people will pass judgment 
that's the, that's on them. That's not yours to carry. And I hope this is making sense to you guys. Um, as far as spiritual, I know like I smudge and to me, I, it feels very spiritual. Um, but I was recently part of a drum group that was just learning. Um, I am not a singer or drummer, but I had a blast. And there would be times when we're drumming, um, we would all get and stand up and we would really go into a song. And to me, that just fueled my soul right down to my very being. It made me feel... I don't know, alive, <laughs> if that's, you know, a way that I can describe it. But like every part of my being just came alive with the more I learned about my culture and the more even speaking the language. I'm not a speaker, but I've taken classes. I've learned a little bit from other people. And when I speak to my grandson or my granddaughter and they understand what I'm saying, uh, I think it's incredible. It's it's a gift that, you know, I wish was shared with me. And, but yet I understand why it wasn't. That has nothing to do with my dad not wanting us to learn the language. It's a result of the experiences he's gone through. And, you know, he did the best that he could. And now if I want to learn the language, that's on me. So basically taking what's yours. Um, the other thing too is I'm not creative at all, but I painted this weekend and for some reason that almost felt spiritual to me in the way that I could feel my mom and my dad like understanding why, what I was putting into this and why. And like, I just, it brought me back to being home again. And, you know, I don't know, whatever brings you peace, you know, is that sitting on a beach with your feet in the sand? That's okay. That's your, that, that can be spiritual to you. Um, laying on your deck in the sun and just letting the sun hit your face. That could be a spiritual moment for you too. You no, know? so there, it's finding out what works for you. Anyway. So that's basically a little bit about what I wanted to talk about holistic wellness. Like you're allowed to steer your own boat. You know, you get, you get to decide how you want to spend your days and, you know, every decision we make, there's consequence. Sometimes you make the wrong ones. Sometimes you make the right ones, but understand that there's no black and white, right and wrong. It may mean that I made a decision. I'll have to go back and change it, you know? That's okay. Anyway, um, did we want to take a break and see if there's any questions? I would like to actually try to do um, a little virtual, I guess, meditation. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to just wait a second to see if any, anybody pops up. Yeah, hi, Nancy. Uh, it's Mick speaking again. So I have a quick question for you. Okay. Um, with COVID happening, you know, it makes things a little bit trickier. How do you recommend folks to reach out to community or to other friends to have that sense of community but still remain safe? Are there certain activities that, that works that you can recommend or things that folks can do to, you know, stay motivated and stay on top of yeah. with, with COVID? Um, a lot of things, especially for students, there's always reaching out back to your community, to your home and stuff like that, and staying connected that way, you know, text, whatever. But on campus, although we're not allowed to do a lot, a lot of groups are having stuff online. Um, I know CC Jones and myself are, are still doing counseling online. Uh, they have somebody over at Stu doing the same thing. And other than that, like some of the events that we had, even though they're kind of put on hold for now, um, I've still delivered some supplies to students, Indigenous students, to do like different 
drumming or, or beadwork or stuff like that. Um, staying connected with your instructors too. Like there's no reason why you can't stay connected to your instructors so that you're not falling behind uh, because that's going to add extra strength or stress to you. Um, I'm just trying to think of other ways. Like I know um, in Fredericton, we have a friendship center uh, under one sky. They have a site where a lot of um, the frontline workers um, in the schools or in the um, universities are all getting together and suggesting things to put on their site, uh, different ways to connect, different things that are either happening online or um, in person with, of course, social distancing and masks and everything like that. So, the, you know, it's a way to stay connected. And you got to be careful, too, that you're not overloading yourself with negative um just negative you know try to find the positive out there too there's a lot of things in the news right now that it couldn't really drag you down so kind of limit yourself know your boundaries as far as you know this is really getting in my head i haven't shut off cnn in two hours i'm going outside you know so it's again you know you want to stay up to date but you don't want to be bombarded to the point where it just completely depletes you. I hope that answers your question. Absolutely. Thank you. I think Vishnu also had a question. Oh, okay. Um, I did not quite have a question. I just wanted to like comment on when you talked about using the, um, the sage and cedar bundle to like, um, like cleanse yourself of the things you see, the things you hear, the words you say, um, and also on your heart. And I, I, I am a Hindu and we practice, well, we practice Hinduism and I grew up obviously in an Indian, uh, like in an Indian family. And we had a lot of, I, like the, the presence of uh, incense sticks was a lot. Like we had a lot of incense around the house, any sort of like uh, event or any sort of thing that we do, we usually have incense burning somewhere or the other. And I never really paid a lot of attention to what my mom used to do with the incense, but she would normally first so, sort of offer it to God, like send the fumes to the idol. And then she would put a couple, like a bit of it on her eyes, on her heart and on her ears and everything. And I just never really paid a lot of attention to it. But girl, now, now, with a little more knowledge about things and hearing what you do, listening to you speak and everything, I feel like it, it really calms you. Like mm. it helps you like see things clearly. It just, it just sends, it brings a sense of like peace. And yeah. I just wanted to say that, thank you for like talking about that as well. It made me realize something that I didn't before. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Okay, so if there's nothing else, maybe um, I'm going to see if I can share my screen and maybe do a little, if you're okay with it. I got so much stuff up here. Hold on a sec. I should have done that a while ago. Okay, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Now I gotta see how do you share your screen? Hmm. Share screen, the oh, big one. Oh, it says I can't share my screen. Mick, do you know if I can share my screen? Yep, I'm um, adding the option to uh, to share with you now, so you can now share. Thank you. 
So you should be able to uh, access that now. Okay. Did that work? It says you are sharing your screen. Yep, we see the uh, the PowerPoint. Okay, good. Thank you. So if possible, I would like to just kind of read through a little script for you. And um, hopefully you can shut off your monitors and just take a few minutes and listen if that's okay. So this is something I've done with one of the classes and I was hoping that, you know, I could try it with you guys and see how you feel. So let's begin. Take a deep breath in. Allow yourself to relax a little on the out breath. Try it again, in and out. Sometimes you can close your eyes, but you can leave them open if you'd like. You can experiment back and forth by opening your eyes. See if you like that. Watch the water fall on the screen. Or you can keep your eyes closed and go in your own little space. I'm going to ask you to simply imagine being in a place where you feel safe and relaxed. This can be a real place that you've been to before, or it can be some place that you wish and hope for. Notice as you look around your safe space, is the sun shining or is there a gentle rain? Is the breeze cool enough to bring goosebumps to your arms? Can you smell the wildflowers around you? Or are you sitting in nature, lying in the comfort of familiar sounds and smells? Or are you walking and looking at the beauty all around you? Take a moment and listen for your breathing. Focus without judgment without worry that you're doing it wrong and continue to focus on your breath and staying in your relaxed place. If your neck is tight, feel the release of tension from your neck as you breathe out. Let your shoulders drop a little lower with each breath out. If your mind wanders back that's okay, this takes practice. Just let it go and come back to my voice and the image of your safe space. Let yourself be comfortable and know that you have value. You have purpose and it's okay to take some time for yourself. As you breathe in, trust that you are doing okay. As you breathe out, Relax your arms and soften your fingers. As you breathe in, feel your chest and feel your belly rise. As you breathe out, let go of the weight that you've been carrying. Breathe in, tighten all the muscles in your legs and feet. As you breathe out, let them relax and fall limp. As you breathe in, feel the warmth of self-love, the unconditional love of your ancestors, the love of a family friend or a close, or a family member or a close friend, the love of a pet, and know that there are people who love you and want the best for you, even if you don't feel it right now. Trust that it is there. As you breathe out, let go of what's not in your control. You don't have to have all the answers. As you're taking this time, I'd like to bring you to my favorite place, 
back in my community, walking along the boardwalk down to the beach. You can see the tall grass almost dancing as the wind blows between it. As you get closer to the beach, you notice a little pool of the water running where it slowly, slowly goes down towards the beach between the sand, making a tiny little river. If you walk a little further towards the cliffs, you can put your feet in the clay. You can pick it up and feel it fall through your fingers or you can squeeze it tight into a ball. As you further go down towards the beach, you can see the little waves touching the sand as they come up and down, back and forth. See the darkness of the sand as the water hits it and it, as it lightens as it retreats. Feel the warm sand in your feet, on your feet, and step into the water to the cool, cool salt water. Smell the salt water. Hear the sound of the waves. Take your time to walk up the beach, noticing the logs that have drifted up onto the shore. Thinking of all the times people gathered there and shared moments together. It's one of my favorite places to be. With my feet in the sand, I know I'm home. And I wanna thank you for coming there with me. Continue to focus on your breathing as we open our eyes and come back in a relaxed state and ready to continue on with our day. So that's just a short little um, I would probably say that's like a short little meditation compared to others that I've done. Okay, I'm going to start my video back up again. Anyway, um, that's pretty much what I had planned for today. I hope um, I made some sense to you and connected in some way. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to listen. Um, I don't have a question. I just know it's kind of weird to talk into a void. So um, I wanted to say thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you so much, Nancy, for um, joining us today and giving us um, a little talk. And then the meditation session at the end was fantastic, um, especially after Thanksgiving. Um, all the props, you know, assigning assignments the next week. So it's yeah. nice to have that little meditation time to just relax and ground yourself again. Um, so if there's no other questions, I'm going to uh, stop the recording and um, end the call. So again, on behalf of the UMBSU, we wanted to say thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, we hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you. Take care.